Breaking news any moment now. The House Rules Committee will hold a hearing on the Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Expungement Act, better known as the MORE Act. Now, if the committee approves it, the full House is then expected to vote on the bill, which would federally decriminalize cannabis and remove it from the Controlled Substances Act by Friday. The legislation not only creates opportunities for U.S. cannabis companies and their stocks, but could plant the seed for Canadian-based companies to finally enter the market on a federal level. Several Canadian cannabis stocks popped last week after the expected vote was announced. Tilray seeing a near 40, well, more than 41 percent gain since March 23rd. The vote announcement was made midday March 24th. So let's bring in Tilray's chairman and CEO, Erwin Simon, to find out I guess what would happen if it does pass? Now, Erwin, we've seen this movie before. Back in 2020, a similar bill was passed by the House, and then it kind of just sort of went kaput with a Republican-led Senate. This time around, what's your over-under on whether it might pass all the way through to the president's desk? So good afternoon, Liz, and nice to see you. Listen, I think my over-under is... You know, I'm not totally sure if it will get through, but it makes so much sense. You know, our lawmakers are sitting there in Washington. Here we are as Biden looks to increase tax on so-called billionaires. But this here is so important, number one, from a safe bank act in regards to, you know, and the institutional shareholders want to buy cannabis stocks. You know, we've traded, you know, mostly in the last couple of weeks, over 100 million shares. Mm. It shows they want to own stocks. Institutions want to own these stocks. In regards to the MORE Act, in regards to decriminalization and social justice, it's really important a part of the social justice. And, you know, there's people sitting in jail today because of cannabis laws that are outdated, and we got to change them. And in regards to full legalization, you just saw where Walmart decided not to sell cigarettes anymore, which is great. You know, there's about $65 million worth of tobacco sold in the U.S. And if you look at tax dollars, the opportunities for tax dollars to come into, you, you know, the IRS or come into the world here is so important. In Canada alone, $18 billion of tax dollars that came in over the last three years. And you think about the reduced gas tax that's happening out there, the reduced you know, taxes on tobacco. Right. What a great way if they legalize cannabis for an opportunity to pick up all those tax dollars. Well, it's almost two pieces here. Um, I'm glad you brought up the tax implications because from a political standpoint, it's a win-win. It would bring in so much revenue on a federal level. I'm interested to know what it would mean for your company, Tilray. Have you sort of modeled for how much in taxes <clears throat> you might be having to pay when it comes to this, if it were federally approved? So here is an industry today by 2030, if legalization, full legalization happened, would be a hundred billion dollar industry. You know, if you look in Canada today, they pay about 28% excise tax. So you can do the math, what's 28% of a hundred billion dollars. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the opportunity is, it's not only the tax dollars, it's the jobs it's created. In Canada, there were $6 billion of infrastructure built. So what does it do for Tilray? Tilray is one of the largest cannabis companies in the world today, if not the largest. I'm up in Ontario today at our cannabis facilities, and we have about two and a half million square feet of cannabis grow. Just think in regards to free trade, what we could do in regards to growing cannabis here and shipping it into the U.S. like we do into Europe and places like that. In regards to, you know, expertise, we've been doing this now for three years in adult recreational and medical. What it would mean for us is we could take our expertise in growing cannabis in regards to our medical cannabis research and regards to export it into the U.S. MedMen is a company that here in the United States you've taken an investment in through convertible bonds. This is interesting to me because they already have more than two dozen storefronts in the states where it is legal. Because, of course, for those of you who don't really understand how this is working, federally, weed is not legal. So you can't, you can't have cross-border transactions and money moving across borders. But here on the map, you can see which states have legalized it. MedMen is in those states. So it's almost as if if it, if it were legalized on a federal level, you immediately have storefronts, correct? But what other kind of build-out are you planning if it becomes legal eventually? 
So, you know, good question. You know, if legalization did happen, we own notes of MedMen, which would convert to only about 25% of MedMen. Yeah. MedMen is like Apple in the cannabis world. There's over, you know, there's 25 stores. It's a great brand. And, you know, we did this deal in September in the midst of doing a lot with MedMen right now. In regards to other things we would do, Liz, we would acquire or look to, you know, do something with other MSOs in the U.S. We have the balance sheet. We have the know-all, the know-how. And we also have a major spirits business in our Sweetwater Brewery and our Breckenridge Bourbon, which we would look to do with fused drinks. Right. And we have, you know, like our alcohol drinks today, we have our distribution system. So we'd have a great spirits business. We'd have a great infused drinks business. And the most important thing is this here. We're ready to jump in now. It's not going to take us three, four years. The other thing is, too, we are really, really good at from a regulatory and quality standpoint. And that is important. If we're going to do anything in cannabis that you got good regulations, you got good quality, and you got good processes out there, and Tilray is ready to do that. Yep. And for, for those who are not for legalization, there is a part of this more bill, in essence, that takes a tax from the weed companies and uh, helps when it comes to the war on drugs, et cetera, situation like that. Uh, Irwin, please come back. Um, again, we don't want to get over our skis on this. I know you're a great skier, but we'll be watching because right now they're in <laughs> still in a recession, uh, still in um what am I saying? You know, they're, they're meeting. They're well, going to meet this they're, afternoon. They're, 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 recess, not a recession. But, I've know, got recession. Liz, <laughs> Liz, our politicians got to listen to their constituents. You know, like I said before, you know, 63% want adult use, you know, 90% want medical. And we didn't talk about the medical opportunities here. Right. So, you know, our representatives got to listen to what the constituents want out there. They want this legalized. They want the safe bank or the more after a full legalization to happen. Erwin Simon of Tilray, thank you very much. It's good to see you. Thank you, Liz. Great to see you, too.